I am not a meteorologist. I will just do geopolitical conversation, which is where we are headed next. It is early in the show. We've got a lot of energy. Why don't we talk PGA Tour and live and what joining forces could potentially look like? Greg, we'll start with you because you mentioned it. Rory McIlroy did put some quotes out last week in regards to live golf and PGA Tour and what what a shared season, a shared tour, a crossover could look like. Rory said... I'd say we'll know by the end of the year whether that's a possibility or not. He's referring to uh, essentially uh, not two tours becoming one, but whatever whatever that crossover looks like. He said, I, I think all tours are going to keep trucking along and doing their own thing for the foreseeable future. I think the best thing we can hope for is a bit of a crossover between them. That's kind of the – there's a lot of things to, to, to iron out, Greg. Um, yeah, finances, penalties, returns, what, how access to major chain, all of that stuff. The, the one thing that is probably one of the more important items that does not get talked about is what this would even look like if some agreement were to come to place. There are only a handful of guys on live who probably want to see action on the PGA tour and the rest of them don't. And what are you going to do? Allow your PGA tour players to go over there. It's just that part has never really been addressed enough. No. And it's a very, like, I, I just, I'm not trying to be pessimistic here, but I just don't see that. I, I don't see it at all. I mean, it, you turn, you immediately turn it into an exhibition match. It would be in all likelihood, it would be useless. The, the only way that it actually makes sense the only way it actually makes sense is if you were to allow live players to play the PGA tour. And I'm not sure they want to. And I know the PGA tour doesn't want to allow that. So it's a really hard thing to put together. I mean, other than some kind of manufactured format and event that's played somewhere across the globe, which would be basically just a get together um, and it played for a, a lot of money. And, and it's really difficult for me to see the value in that for fans. It's not really leading to anything. Uh, we're just kind of hang. I mean, it may as well be the hero world challenge, which is fine, but it, it it's not a, it's not going to be a thing. And so I don't see how these two, uh, let, let's start, let me just start here. I'm sorry for going long here, but ultimately there's an issue with live players getting official world golf ranking points because of format and live wants to maintain their new and fresh format, which is a closed circuit league, right? They want to have trades within their league. From out. They want it to be like other sports, you know, a, a big name player from the jets gets traded to a big, you know, to a, to a team in Philadelphia or whatever, however all that works and it makes news and it's a, a big deal and changes the format of the league or they bring in someone from LSU, right? From college, or in this case from the PGA tour and the PGA tour is playing its events to get to the FedEx cup, uh, the, the FedEx cup championship in August. So they just don't mix. And I think that's ultimately a really big issue when there's when there's no deal done i don't see how these like the dp world tour it makes sense for them to mix they play the same format they're competing for official world golf ranking points you go play one event over here you go play one event over there and you get back on your tour and, and you know everything is good and dandy i i don't see how it works for live pga tour. let's game this out patrick because i i tend to agree with greg there i don't think there's a lot of Pl player incentive either. I, I think that 40 of the 50 some odd guys on live golf are just happy with what is going on. And they're going to play their 12 to 14 times a year. They're going to make their guaranteed money plus large purses. And they're going to be just fine about that. I do not believe Kevin Na is dying to get back to PGA tour events. I do not see that at all. So this is for like the six to 12 guys that care. Let's start. Let's just say John Rom. John Rom is going to be under live contract. So he's going to play 12 or 14 events a year. 
He's going to want to play a couple of national opens. He's probably going to want to play, uh, you know, at Mirfield Village and maybe in Phoenix and obviously the major championships. When you start adding that up, it's a couple of things. It's a lot of golf for John Rahm. Right. If John Rahm is going to actually do all of that, he's going to play about 26 times a year, maybe, maybe more, which I don't know if that's reasonable. And he's going to have basically a free pass to go between any tour that he wants. But to Greg's point, if you're playing a team format on live golf, PGA tour players might not have a free pass to go back and forth or else it would blow up the format of their league. So th this is just a really weird situation that I only think matters for 12 guys, but it's critically important to those 12 guys. I wouldn't even say 12 guys because not only does Kevin Na not want to play on the PGA Tour, the PGA Tour probably doesn't want Kevin Na to play on the PGA Tour. There are three guys you could argue maybe five or six who the PGA Tour probably want back, John Rahm, Bryson DeChambeau, and Brooks Kepka. Dustin Johnson, he's probably, let's be honest, going to retire after live golf he's done with live golf maybe a joaquin neiman maybe a cameron smith you could add in as well but outside of that who is the pga tour really missing so what i would say is th this crossover i think could be pretty similar to what we just saw there at the alfred dunhill links championship you had 14 live golf players in the competition you had a live golf player win the entire tournament you had all of the DP World Tour staples from Rory, Fleetwood, Fitzpatrick playing. You even had Billy Horschel playing and some PGA Tour guys. Andrew Putnam was over there. That kind of came out of the blue. And so if I'm the PGA Tour and I want this to be a crossover, I've said before I want open borders. I know it's an election year. That's a hot take. But I want open borders in between these tours. I tell the John Roms of the world, if you want to come back to the PGA Tour and pick off OWGR points wherever it may be or, or – play in tournaments that you think are important to you, like Phoenix Open for John Rahm, since he's from there, retroactively pay fines. You're not in the equity program. And we go on our way. I think that's enough for me, personally, as a golf fan. I probably agree because I don't have a better solution. And I don't see, I honestly don't, I don't have another solution. I don't see any other way other than that being the case. Yeah, maybe you don't get access to, I don't know, take away John Rahm's pension. I don't think he cares. Take away John Rahm's equity stake that he might have earned in the PGA Tour. Let him play. It'll be good for you those weeks that he's here. It, every some, every, There's going to be a lot of people who are rubbed the wrong way about it, but if a, if an actual deal gets done, I do not see another way around it. Uh, I don't either. And one of the other issues is in order to be a member of the PGA Tour, which is an important thing. It's an important, you know, we're playing for cards. This FedEx Cup fall is all about playing for PGA Tour cards. It's playing for membership. And if, if you know, if it were me, I would say to John Rom, you can play, um, but you got to play 15 events. In order to maintain your membership, just like on the DP World Tour, you got to play four. And I think you'd find that it becomes a overwhelming schedule with the events on live that are mandatory uh, and, and the events on the PGA Tour that you would have to get to 15. You're playing a and if you play the four majors, which John Rahm would be eligible for, you're talking about 11 additional events to the schedule. That's so, John so Greg, like 35 times a year, I was, I was going to move on, but it, you know, that's interesting. I hadn't considered that before. So if John Rahm wants to play in Phoenix, he has to be a PGA tour member to get his PGA tour status. He would have to earn a card in some way, uh, whether that is through a variety of, of avenues and he'd have to maintain it. Or would it just become a situation in which John Rahm catches sponsors exemptions at any event, I mean, sponsors exemptions are unrestricted, right? They could put Tony Romo in the field. They could put me in the field. They could put John Rahm in the field. Uh, yes, in, in theory. Now, I, I'm assuming that John Rahm is currently suspended. So I, I guess way around that. that, if you were if you were trying to make friends, right? You're trying to make this work, and I'm not sure that they are or aren't. But you could, in theory, lift the suspension. And and then sponsor exemptions would be an option. 
and you would tick off a lot of your membership doing that. Uh, the guys would get really upset about that because now you're in this situation where you're cherry picking events. Um, yeah. and, and that would be a, it, the exact situation of the rich get richer, right? You know, if you're, if you're John Rom, you can cherry pick, you can play live, get the guaranteed money, cherry pick events on the PGA tour, DP world tour majors, right? I mean, you get everything you, you get your cake and eat it too. Uh, and that would make a lot of players really upset. The, the waters are so muddied. I don't know how you clean them at this, even if there was right. Like I said, a financial agreement, a, a, the, the corporations come together. So a, a half, half of everybody are, is going to be upset no matter, no matter what happens. I, I, th I think there's only one way to clean the waters and that's, Live goes away, players on Live come back to the PGA Tour, or the PGA Tour goes away, and all of those <laughs> players go to Live. Right? I mean, I I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's another option. Um, the pre the Premier League above both of them, <laughs> in which they feed into. Yeah, I mean that. Look, that that could be a right. You ran this model of, eventually. Uh, that, there's a potential that something like that could work. I'm not sure if it's the best on the business end of things for anybody involved, um, except for probably the players. But mm. yeah, perhaps that perhaps that is the only other solution. But again, that requires a deal. To, that requires some sort of deal, some sort of agreement to get done. There's one other thing. I know we want to move on. What if it... This has problems too, but what if you just had another another cup that was PGA Tour versus Live? I, th I they, thought you were going to say a, a, another league. <laughs> no, another league. <laughs> so they stay they stay separate, but but what? Once a year, once every two years. Once yeah, once every two years they play against each other in the Live PGA Tour Cup. It's Patrick that, has his President's Cup Matt uh, shirt on. I think that would do, I think it would do numbies as the kids say, but I like, why does John Rahm want that? He well, he's getting an opportunity to play for his tour. He wants uh, to play. He wants to play in majors and the Phoenix open. And so it's kind of like the, when the MLS all-star team plays man, U. right. Well, I mean, it'd be like, you know, it's two all-star teams playing against each other. I would like it as an addition. I just don't, I don't think it's like the solution. Yeah, I, I don't either. But if you are the PGA Tour and you're looking for an extra $2 billion, yes. um, you know, if that's what you're looking for, that's a way to generate some revenue. I don't know if it would generate that much. The Ryder Cup probably has a value somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, perhaps you could utilize a, a little rivalry to your advantage. The problem is where Liv gets their players from. That The future for Liv, right now everything's kind of calm and there's not a lot of crossover and it feels like everybody can just keep going about their merry way, but where does Liv get their next crop of stars from? The answer is probably the PGA Tour, and that's where these things go from calm but muddy to uh you know explosive and and very tense very quickly